am here at Costco because I need to find something to go in my freeze dryer for today's freeze dryer run. Let's go inside and see if they have what I'm looking for. Can I brag about our beautiful weather today? It's sunny and 73 degrees. How is it where you live? Is it roasting and hot? Today is amazing in Alaska. Cheese is what I am looking for to freeze dry. For freeze dried cheese, I have heard the best way is to shred it yourself from the block. So I am going to get this Tillamook big block of cheddar cheese. It is 1969. I also wanted to do a mozzarella. So I am going to get the Kirkland mozzarella big old okay <laughs> block of cheese I never know how much product to buy to fill my freeze dryer tray so I'm hoping these two blocks will fit fine if not I'll find something else to throw on the trays along with them and because it's Costco come for one thing <laughs> leave with a million these packs of cherries are only five bucks and they are so good so I had to get a few of those and just stuck up on some more groceries and we were out of rice. <laughs> well, I am just going to go ahead to the checkout and then be on our way, get this prepped for the freeze dryer. Well, that was a successful Costco trip as it usually always is. We will get home and get this cheese prepped for our freeze dryer. I made it back home to my kitchen and I'm ready to get this cheese grated and onto my freeze dryer trays. I have a new kitchen gadget to test out. I ordered this on Amazon. It looked like a fancy cheese grater and I have not even opened it yet or used it. So we are gonna find out together if this is an item that we like or not. This went together nice and easy. It comes with three different blades. This larger blade that I'm gonna use for shredding the cheese, a little bit more of a finer shred, and then this one for slices. So I'm gonna do mostly the large one, but I do wanna do a few slices to just see how those freeze dry. If they end up tasting like little cheese crackers, I think that could be fun. So we're gonna try that along with the shredded cheese. This is the size of the hopper where you stick the cheese. So I am just going to cut up my blocks of cheese into little rectangles that will fit in here and we will get to shredding. Okay, let's give this a whirl. I've got the mozzarella cheese to go in first. I mean, who doesn't love cheese? I'm kind of obsessed. So we are gonna stick this in the little hopper guy and I got my bowl here to catch it. Let me make sure can see this. Okay, pause. You know what? I really like this little gadget. It seemed to work really well. I guess my only complaint that maybe I just haven't figured it out yet is as I go, this front hopper part tends to push forward and unlock. But when you push it back, it just goes back, right back into place. But this made grating the cheese so fast. I mean, I did half of this giant block of mozzarella cheese in like three minutes. So I think I'm gonna give this a recommendation. I really like it. It really beats hand grating your cheese, that's for sure. I plan on doing two trays of mozzarella and two trays of cheddar. So let's see how far this has gone. I'm using my tray liners, but I just looked on Amazon and they are currently out of stock. So sorry about that. I will link a similar set that I don't have, but there are similar ones on Amazon to what I have. I will link them for you if you are looking for some budget friendly liners that are reusable for your trays. I really, I use these on almost every freeze drying run that I do. I like that I can just wash them clean and then they're ready to go for the next time and they help things not stick to the tray. So there's that. Here's my thoughts about the cheese. The trays are fairly full. I mean, that's a good amount of cheese on these two trays. 
I'm hoping they're not, it's not too full, not it's just gonna clump up together too bad. But we will find out. This is my first run of doing shredded cheese and we'll see how it goes. I will do these trays and then next let's get the cheddar on the other two. my problem why this was slipping it I didn't just have it locked in properly this time it didn't slip on me at all worked perfectly so I'm definitely going to be recommending this cheese shredder if you are looking for one I'm loving this I totally wasn't paying attention and the cheese got all jammed up in the little hopper thing but I think I was able to rescue it enough to try these little slices as crackers I think that could be so fun this might be one of my favorite freeze drying runs to date. I just love cheese so much. If you're a fellow cheese lover, tell me in the comments your favorite type of cheese. I like all cheese, but I'm definitely a huge fan of goat cheese. So that might, might need to be in a future video, who knows, but right now we're just going with classic mozzarella and cheddar. I've got lots of cheese left over to do another run with my freeze dryer. So once I get this run done and I see how it all goes, I will definitely be doing more. I'm gonna get this down to the freeze drying room and let's look at the settings that we're gonna use. I love my tray lids that I got from Harvest Right. They just make it so convenient for moving around with your freeze dryer trays. I was able to just stack them all up and bring them down to my freeze drying room. I have a link to Harvest Right in my video description below. If you are in the market for any accessories for your freeze dryer or wanna look at freeze dryers themselves, you can always click my affiliate link. I appreciate any time you shop with my links. It helps support this channel and I am just so grateful to you guys when you do that. So thanks in advance. Let's get to our freeze dryer and get it going. These here are the standard settings, which I am good with, except I just like to increase my dry time. I like to add like six or seven hours just for if the freeze drying run ends at a time when I'm not ready to get the food out, it will keep drying the food and that's not gonna hurt anything. It'll just make sure your food's extra dry. Then it'll be just available for when I wanna get to it and can actually take the time to get it all packaged up and stuff. So we're just gonna hit save and start and we just wait a 15 minute cool down. While that is cooling off, I wanted to tell you about my new little segment that I'm doing in my videos. It is called Brooks Trivia Corner. And you know what sounds funny? I don't know that I've ever said my name before. My name's Brooke. Um, I'm not just DIY free try, but that's me, but I thought it would be fun in my videos to throw little trivia questions. And if you know the answer or think you know the answer, I want you to leave it in the comments. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give the answer and I wanna know if you got it right or not. My first few trivias will probably be Alaskan themed because that's fun. So here is my first trivia question. Can you name all five species of salmon. Our family was on a boat cruise in Seward, Alaska, and that was a trivia question on that boat cruise. Five types of salmon, and I had no idea. I think I could think of two at the time. So if you know all five, tell me in the comments, and no cheating. I know you probably have access to the internet right there, but if you can do it just from the top of your head, let me know and I'll give you the answer at the end of the video. Okay, when this is ready, we will load up our trays. All right, we are all set. I can't wait to see how this turns out. I'll keep you updated tomorrow on how long everything takes and we will go from there. So I will catch you guys tomorrow. Bye. Good night. I can't wait to touch to eat the cheese. Bye.
it is the next day and our cheese is ready to come out of the freeze dryer. It has entered the extra dry cycle and has been there for about five hours. We've had a fun, busy day today. We took the kids out to a lake where they played on kayaks and we we're just soaking up the sun while it's here. I will add a few clips from our lake day at the end of the video for you guys to enjoy but let's get this cheese out of the freeze dryer. It looks like I had some type of condensation problem happening here. I'm not sure what happened there. If you got any tips, let me know. I'm just gonna go cancel, open the drain valve. And I'm gonna see if we are looking good. Here is how everything looks. It all feels completely dry. It definitely shrunk up, which I think is obviously just from the moisture leaving it, but this is awesome. I'm so excited to use this. For packaging the cheese, I am gonna do two of my Mylar bags, two of these smaller mason jars, and just set aside some for the recipe I'm gonna use. I'm still working on packaging up, but here's how you can see how I did my jars. I threw an oxygen absorber on top of these jars, and I will also vacuum seal it with my food saver. These I just threw in a few oxygen absorbers with and heat sealed it with my heat sealer right here. Got a couple more bags to go, but me and Bria want to try our crackers. Okay, this is what we're calling our healthy version of a Cheez-It. It literally does look exactly like a Cheez-It, but it's what? just cheese. So let's see how this tastes. Lincoln, back cheese. up, please. One, two, three. Mm. 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 That's good. Yeah. That looks like a normal Cheez-It. It does taste like a Cheez-It, but much better, actually. These are good. The inside. I'm kind of obsessed with these cheese crackers. If you're someone who's trying to eat less carbs, this is a great crunchy snack that is perfect. So good. While I finish my snack, I've got my cheese packaged up that I'm going to use for our recipe. I'm making a baked ziti for dinner tonight and I'm gonna use our freeze dried cheese. So let's get going on that. I've got the food started over here on the stove. As far as rehydrating the cheese goes, if you're wanting to just rehydrate the cheese by itself, the best way to do it is between two like damp paper towels, put the cheese in between and set it on top just so it can slowly rehydrate. And I have heard that that works great. For me and what I'm doing with this recipe, I'm just going to mix the cheese straight into the cheese sauce for the break ziti. I am gonna to top it with the freeze dried cheese at the end also. And to prevent it from just instantly burning, I'm just gonna bake it covered in foil and hope that that technique works and hoping that the steam from the food will rehydrate the cheese and it'll melt and just be gooey and delicious. So I will see how that goes. This is looking amazing. This is the sauce that I'm going to add my pasta to. And this is an easy baked ziti recipe. I just mix the pasta sauce with the meat and cheese and all that with the noodles, then top it with cheese and bake it in the oven like that. Super simple and I think this is gonna be super delicious. Here is how it looks in my baking dish. As I was pouring it in, the cheese was already melty and starting to do that delicious cheese pull. This is looking so good. I'm just gonna add the topping of the cheese and cover it in foil. In 30 minutes, this is gonna be ready for dinner and we will let you know how it all turns out. Now I get to clean some dishes. Here it is, hot and fresh out of the oven. You can see closely that top layer of cheese a few of them did burn a little when I took the foil off. It didn't fully like hydrate and melt, but I still think it's going to taste delicious. Even with a little crunchy cheese, I actually think that's going to make it even better. 
I'm gonna get this dished up and served to my family and we will give you the final consensus. Delicious. The top cheese part does have a little bit of a crunch and chewy texture to it. So maybe just leave that out if you think that's gonna bother you or try to rehydrate the cheese um, on paper towels before putting it on your food. But the cheese that's inside the mixture is just, the mixture itself is just cheesy and delicious and great. So I definitely think this recipe is a win. I am just out here on my evening walk. I've been trying to walk in the evenings after dinner because the weather is just so amazing and it's nice to get out and move your body. But the views are just absolutely gorgeous. I'm just always in awe at the beauty of the mountains here that I live in, just in my backyard. It's gorgeous. Okay, are you ready for the answer to Brooks Trivia Corner? The question was, what are the five types of salmon? I should have clarified Alaskan salmon not salmon all over the world. There are five types of salmon in Alaska. Here's your answer. Chum, sockeye, chinook, silver, and pink. You'll have to let me know if you got that right or how many you got of the five. We are hoping to be able to go salmon fishing again soon. Right now, the salmon are running, so Everyone has been headed down to the Kenai on the Kenai River where all the salmon fishing is and we want to go dip netting. There's so much fish you literally just stick this big old net in the river and you come out with a ton of fish. It's a huge thing here in Alaska. We haven't done it yet but we are hoping to soon. We're also trying to get my husband out on a halibut charter because we would love to get some halibut in the freezer also because that sounds amazing. My husband prefers halibut over salmon. I love salmon, but I like halibut too. Okay, I'm climbing another hill, so I'm getting out of breath. I will wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will catch you guys on the next freeze drying adventure. Bye.